Today in I bought something ridiculously expensive. I bought myself a male hobbock. So I ordered from uh, Celtic Web Merchant a male hobbock made by Ulfbert and this is how they ship it. I chose Ulfbert because well in my experience they have a lot of uh, relatively good quality against a relatively low cost so that's why I chose this one so I did wear it once and uh, let me just say it came with so much oil my Ekaton used to be completely white and now uh, this but it's a good thing because the more oil the better it preserves against rust so here it is. It's a long one with long sleeves, mixed rings, and I can tell you this is very, very heavy between the 15 and 25 kilos, I believe. So, yeah, first glance, you can see it's made of uh, little mixed rings that means these ones are solid and then you also have a row of riveted ones i do prefer the mixed rings because in uh, if you're looking at history they also used uh, almost only mixed uh, ring uh, type of patterns you can also see uh, with this one some of the rings uh, that are riveted the rivets have fallen out so if you have the mixed rings you won't have a problem and it won't the mixed rings won't snag so much in your clothes this hauberk does snag a bit the first time i used it i did shave my knuckles a bit on the rings that are uh, riveted but that's not that much of a problem so yeah i'm not gonna put it on i'm not gonna put it on on top of my ekaton i'm gonna put it on on top of my tunic because uh, my ekaton is so thick i'm not gonna wear it anymore because when i wore it with the mail on top, well, it broke me down pretty much. So yeah, I don't need to uh, loosen my belt because it is so big. That's actually standard with when you order mail. It's so big you uh, cannot uh, go without an extra uh, belt on top of it. Normally, uh, it wouldn't be required in history. They would have uh, had uh, no belt on top except for the one that's holding the sword, but that's just primary function uh, in reenactment you do see a lot of belts on top but that's because they are not as well fitted as they would have been historically So yeah, as you can tell, this is only the second time I'm wearing it. So I hope in uh, the future it will be easier for me. But for now, it's uh, the technique is uh, lacking. So yeah, belt on top, as I said, historically they didn't, but now I do. Just because it's so big. As you can see the sleeves. I myself am eight, 1 meters 80 centimeters tall. You see how big this is on me, even without a padded garment underneath. Now, looking again, here we see the pattern. Here you see sometimes a uh, rivet has popped out, also on this side. But it's uh, forgivable because it, uh, I believe, is primarily handmade. I did get a lot of oil off of it, but it's still very, very greasy. So, 
So yeah, uh, the weight is now primarily resting on the belt. Uh, I am going to uh, fit it more to my body. So the weight will be distributed uh, on the hips, not so much on the shoulders, without using a belt. Because, well, that's the historical way. I am also going to fit here a slot for the uh, sword scabbard because the sword was mostly worn in the 11th century then underneath the mail. Only when you see the tabards coming in, they are worn on top of a tabard because you cannot just stick it right through a tabard. Okay, you can, but it's not the most ideal thing. I am also going to include a rider's slit here because as of now, if I'm trying to kneel, this is actually quite difficult. The sleeves, I'm going to use some tie wraps, holding it close to my body and then cutting off the excess of it. I am going to fit it uh, to fit me with a little bit of padding. As I said, the Ecaton was <laughs> killing me because it's so thick. So now, uh, this is my way to go. I, uh, <laughs> I learned from my mistakes, let's uh, just call it that. So yeah. Uh, moreover, I might uh, think about uh, making it a little shorter, but actually the length right now is also quite, quite fine, it's very protecting, but maybe just a little shorter to uh, ease on the weight, because as of now this, I am feeling the weight all across my body, and it's <laughs> quite a bit. If you're fighting all day, it's quite hard. I, uh, the first time I wore it, yeah, it was quite hard because I fought all day long with a pot helm on top and uh, it was not the easiest experience in my life. So yeah, that's uh, how it looks and I'm going to take it off. This is going to look very awkward, I assure you. Yes, that's what they call the mail dance, sinking a bit till it falls off. Okay, so uh, it did come with a plier, so you can uh, fit uh, your own uh, rivets in if they get broken or something. It also come with a little bit of uh, extra mail, loose, loosely packed. This plier, it, it isn't uh, that smooth. But after uh, using it for a while, it will get smoother, I guess. This is a nice uh, inclusion. It's just a bit, a little bit of uh, customer support, which I like. Also, normally, when you get this type of mail, the riveted mail with the round rivets and such, they on a lot of sites they ask more than 500 euros for it. This one was only about 400 for me, so that's a very good thing. I do like the Hawbuck, do note that it is very, very heavy and you do sometimes get to snag it on your clothing or uh, something like that. Not all the rivets are uh, properly done, but you can replace them with the extra uh, rings and rivets that are provided. So yeah, overall, for about 400 euros, a very good piece of mail. And that was the end of my video. I thank you all for watching. And goodbye. See you in the next one.